<laughs> Tuesday, uh, February 3rd, 5.45 p.m. and it's time to get out of here and head to the strip and find a poker game and get in it and hopefully do okay. Well, and hopefully do well. I'm going to tell you that I love you 100 times a day. You'll get tired of my voice. That's how much I'm going to tell you that I'll miss you. I'll miss you if you go. So I'm gonna tell a really quick story. Um, as most of you know, I moved from St. Louis to Las Vegas, but before I lived in St. Louis, I lived in New York. And I actually had a car and would drive sometimes in New York and through New York City, right? Driving in New York City, I thought, was treacherous. Driving in New York City has nothing on driving in Las Vegas at night. Nothing. Okay, that's the story. We made it here. We are safe. And here is obviously um, the Bellagio. So let's get into it. I'm gonna tell you that I need you. I need you every day. You'll get weary of my touch. That's how much I'm gonna tell you that I want you. We came to the Bellagio to play 510 No Limit, but a seat wasn't available yet, and a 2 5 seat was, so I took it. Bought him for the max $500 and joined the fray. My second hand at the table and I looked down at seven eight of clubs from early position and opened at $20. A series of fold commences until we reach the big blind. He calls. Heads up, we see a flop of queen, six, three with one club and the big blind checks it over to me. I flopped, well, nothing, but I have initiative as a pre-flop raiser. I see bet $30 into $40 and the big blind calls. The turn four of clubs is decent, as now I have a flush draw and a gut shot straight draw. When the big blind checks it here, I elect to check it back. The river brings an eight of spades, and now my draw has run into a pair. The big blind checks once again. This time I bet $100, not expecting to be called very often at all from a player that has checked all three streets, but damned if I'm going to lose to pocket nines. He folds. I wanna let you know. Oh, you're the only I literally saw four hands at this 2-5 game before a 5-10 seat opened. I racked up some quick, modest winnings and switched tables. Almost immediately after switching tables, I thought I might have made a mistake. On my 510 table were four 510 regs, two 1020 regs waiting for 1020 seats, one lady I used to play with in St. Louis, and two Ubernets. At first glance, this wasn't going to be the best game in the room. I won a few pots uncontested before I made my first big mistake. Under the gun limps, the low jack raises to 40, and the button calls. I glance down at my hand and misread it as Jack-9 of diamonds, which can squeeze here. Sometimes. However, I don't have Jack-9 of diamonds at all. I have Jack-9 offsuit. Big difference. I put in a squeeze to 140 with a hand that should be an easy fold. Then things get really strange. The under the gun limper calls the 140, as does the low jack, and the button folds. So now I'm out of position versus two players with a hand that I should never, ever have. Oops. 
It's at this point the poker gods get cute. Flop, king of diamonds, queen of diamonds, eight of diamonds. So had I had the hand I was supposed to have, I would have flopped the second nuts. However, in reality, I have a gut shot straight draw that might not even be good and a draw to a nine high flush, which also might not be good. I check and the under the gun limp caller leads out for 200, which gets quickly raised by the low jack to 600. Yeah, I'm done with this. Fold. Another orbit or so later, and I'm starting to see that this is going to be one of those would have, could have, should have sessions that we all hate. Low jack limps, cut off raises to 40, and I call on the button with pocket threes, and the big blind calls as well. The low jack now limp re raises to 200, and the cutoff thinks for a second, then calls. The 510 at Bellagio isn't a very deep game, and making speculative calls with pocket threes doesn't normally end well. I fold, as does the big blind. Again, the poker gods get cute with the queen of hearts, five of hearts, three of spades board, in which I most likely would have gotten the full triple up. <laughs> Small blind versus big blind battles are always interesting. These spots you typically don't get into in lower stakes because it's often smarter to just chop and avoid the rake. However, in a time rate game, this is no longer a concern. Here the small blind opens to $30 and I defend from the big blind with pocket fours. We see a flop of deuce, three, seven, rainbow and the small blind elects not to see bet. With pocket fours here, I often just have the best hand. It's hard to make a pair and the small blind has a ton of hands they can be opening with. Plus my hand isn't the strongest in the world and could use some protection, so I bet $60. Our opponent doesn't take very long with it before finding the call. The turn eight doesn't excite the small blind, and I echo the sentiment. We both check. The river 10, same vibes. He checks, I expose the nuts, and win a pot. If you're asking why I even bothered showing this hand, well, it's because I didn't win many pots this session. Pickings were slim. So, if I wasn't winning pots, well, that only really leaves one option. Here there are two limps and I raised to $60 with king seven of diamonds from the hijack. The cutoff, either sensing I wasn't the strongest, or picking up on me just raising the limpers, or he having a good hand himself, puts in a raise to $200 and action folds back around to me. There's really only one good option at this point, fold. A few more orbits go by where I look down nothing playable until this hand. Hijack opens to 30 and I find the 3 bet in position from the cutoff to $100 with ace jack suited and the hijack finds the call. Connecting with the flop would be nice here, but we don't as it comes down king, deuce, eight, rainbow. The hijack checks and I decide to continue with the C bet of $50. After a small tank, he calls. The turn pairs the eight and put two hearts on board and he checks again. There's absolutely nothing going on for me with this board, so I check behind. The river 10 of diamonds completes the nothing, and while I'm pondering if I should bluff at this, he leads for $140. Well, that makes my decision a bit easier. Fold. Literally, the very next hand I open pocket sevens from the hijack to 30, and a winning 510 reg raises to $100. We can fold here, we can even four bet here, but we land on call, so I toss the $100 into the middle, and we see a flop of six, four, three, rainbow. I'll take great flops not containing a seven for 200, Alex. Staying in flow, we check it over to Joe, I mean, random Bellagio 510 reg, and he checks it back. The turn six of clubs continues the, this board is better for me than for you, theme of the hand, but I choose not to take control and check again. Our villain now bets $140 and we have a pretty trivial call. The river seven of clubs is a great card. Obviously it gives us the proverbial nuts, but it also brings in the backdoor flush draw. 
We check again, hoping that our villain has either backed into just that or that he has nothing and is now forced to bluff. Unfortunately, neither happens. I expose and he says... <laughs> and mucks. This session was filled with me picking up hands good enough to open, but not necessarily good enough to call three bets. Or squeezes. Or it was me picking up pocket pairs and bleeding money away. On the other hand though, the guys at the table were pretty funny and had some interesting life stories. So maybe that's worth something? A bit later, Under the Gun has opened to $30 and we three bet to $100 with King 10 of Diamonds. Action folds back around to the Under the Gun player and he calls. Two of us see the flop of Queen of Clubs, Nine of Diamonds, Six of Diamonds, and he checks control over to us. In position, with the range this strong, we decide to see bet for $140, and that gets the job done. Here, we unnecessarily defend the big blind with King-9 offsuit for $30 to an early position open. If you're taking notes at home, this should be a fold. Our defend, however, has allowed us to flop top pair on the King-4-6 rainbow board, but we're out of position and elect to check it over to the opener. He checks it back. The turn 7 of diamonds doesn't change much. We still have top pair with a meh kicker and stab at the pot for $30. Our villain, however, isn't done with the hand just yet and calls our half pot stab. The river pairs the six and I can go either bet fold or check call here. I choose the latter and check. The early position player instantly checks back and wins this one with King Jack offsuit. would normally be the time for the mid-session update. But I am going to spend this time to decide if there's even going to be a rest of the session. So here's what is going on in my session, and I will make it quick. I'm at a good table with some fun guys. The game is bad because the players are actually decent. The table is short, so I can't switch tables and I'm currently stuck about $700, and it's approximately 11 o'clock at night. So the decision is, do I just hang in there and gut it out? Do I switch venues, or do we just go home and call it a night? And I just take the L like a big boy. I don't know. And hence, I'm here to think about it. As soon as I know, I will let you guys know, and we'll see. Okay, five minutes has elapsed and I have made a decision. 
The guy on my left is a winning 1020 player. The guy on my right is a winning 1020 player. The guy two to my left is a winning 510 reg. And then there's somebody at the other end of the table I really don't know. And then there's a friend of mine from um, St. Louis that's in town. That's the table makeup. And um, nobody's really giving away money. It's just not happening. So we have left. We are going to make this wrap up quick because there really wasn't too uh, many hands that I played this session. There really wasn't much to look at. And um, to be honest with you, I'm pretty proud of myself. I'm breaking my arm, patting myself on the back for leaving that game because the guys at the table were fun. The stories were good. The conversation was good. It was just the game was kind of not desirable. And I was just in a weird situation where I couldn't switch tables. The lesson is, there are other nights, there are other games. Old Jamin would have banged his head against the wall trying to make that game good and it just wasn't gonna happen. So in for 1500, out for 705, there's zero chance I'm gonna try to do that math in my head because it's hard. You gotta like carry the zero or the one. You guys can figure it out if you care. If you like the videos, subscribe, leave me a comment, hit the like. And uh, yeah, I'll probably respond, probably. But until then, I will catch you next time. Bye. Check me out right here, yo. Why can't I speak? <laughs> all right, okay, all right, we're gonna get back in it. Whoop, all right. So I think I'm gonna rack up, I'm gonna call it a night. I don't even, re I don't even remember any decent hands that I got recorded. So who knows what's gonna become of this footage. I'll make something out of it, roll it into my next session, and you'll get a two for one. That's what we're gonna do tonight, two for one. I don't know. We're making this up as we go. And hence, I'm here to think about it. As soon as I let you guys... So here's what's going on in my game and I'll make it quick. I am currently stuck. Probably seven, eight hundred dollars. The game is shorthanded and the game is horrible, but fun. So here's what's going on. It is uh, Tuesday, February... Third, 5.45 p.m. and um, it's time to get out of here. It's time to uh, head to the strip. It's time to find a game of poker and get in it and do well. That's the plan for uh, this evening. So since there wasn't much to see, nor talk about this session, this wrap up will be really quick. I will tell you though, I'm very proud of myself. I'm like breaking my arm, patting myself on the back for just leaving. Leaving a game that is actually fun with good conversation when the game is bad, it's hard to do. I don't know, it's hard for me to do.